I'm going to try and remember this, okay? Try and do it justice. I think this is a bit, and it's, it'll, oh no, it's a bit because it touches my heart. I don't want to play too much again. This bit, right? Yes, I know why. I thought I gave everything. Oh. I and songs are easy Yeah, yeah, I know why is that one. I know why it's that bit. Oh no, the dog. Mm. Jump, tribute, jump. Come on, you can jump. Oh, when I um, was saved. See her? Jump. Come on. Jump. Right? She's massive. She can jump. She watch. But no, she sits. She sits and yelps. It's like being a parent. It's um, it's a, it's a guilt-ridden job. It's a sort of job that, like over t time, you know, d um, I don't know if you understand it. <laughs> I don't know if you understand it. That feeling when you just keep missing the mark. <sighs> like just then, I, um, the camera's not focused on her face and it needed to be. <laughs> Nothing's ever perfect. Come on up again. Come on up again. And they deserve perfect, but it's never perfect. Come on, up you get. Do they deserve perfect? You know, we know I've just done that. Come on, up you get. Oh. You know? <laughs> hey, why such a delay? And she's going to get up and lick me. Right. Okay, let's see. Okay. You've probably all gone back to sleep. Oh, I know what it's that part of the soul. I gave when I when I gave my life to you. I thought I gave everything. I think if I look at it anymore, it's about Jason's testimony. That, that's enough. That's all, that's all the lyrics I can remember, actually. But the song is You're Beautiful. And there's two parts to what I saw. This is, this is the end of what I saw. I'm going to start at the end and go backwards so that you... So it makes sense, okay? Whenever I share this vision, 
I can't say that I saw Jesus. I don't know why it's always been like that. It shouldn't have been like that. Because I did see him. I saw him really, really clearly. But I've never been able to recall it. This was a vision that was so See so look at her face now. She's licking herself making all that noise. And you guys weren't watching, but I gave her a, I banged her up like that. See so look at her face. That's what I did. I don't know why, but they still love you. Look at me again. She's still going to do it. Stop. Right. Hey. You know what it reminds me of? Thank you. It reminds me of when I... She, she reminds me of Amy. Yeah. Before I got saved, maybe I'm behaving like I behave. Excuse me. Oh, I feel really sick there. Maybe I'm behaving like how I behaved before I got saved. Maybe I am. Maybe it doesn't matter. I had an art studio and I used to put her in the front pack and hitch. Boy, that was dangerous. Like, no car seat, nothing. Just put her in the front pack. Thanks for the lift, jump in the front. Just put Ralph around me. I used to hitch when I was pregnant. You don't put the belt on when you're pregnant. When you got the baby, you put the belt on around you. I, th I reckon it's probably safer than a car seat. I mean, you've still got the front back on. Oh, probably not. And I'd go to my art studio. Put on the floor, give everything she needed. She wasn't even crawling. I don't know how it was that early that I decided. I decided pretty early. Just decided. Mixed all the paint. Sat back for half an hour. Got in the, the vibe. You know, like prepared everything. Oh, there's so much preparation. Ready to stand up and start painting. Then something, uh, would always be something, the baby. Whether it be stopped for a breastfeed or whatever, but eventually there would be something. And it went on, I think it went on. Oh, it went on for other interests or anything else I wanted to do for myself, that's right. So, eventually there was pretty much nothing. Nothing that didn't make me feel bad. I just stopped doing everything. And art was the first painting. I'd give up the studio. Basically, I never went back. And what happened is I lost a lot of stuff. Well, I lost a a lot of stuff in that studio. I was in, I wasn't independent and I couldn't get anyone to pick it up. Robin never picked it up. I asked him and asked him. Yeah. 
And people just the landlady landlord and other people who shared the studio just took it. Sort of found out months and months later. Anyway, it's funny I can remember that. So anyway, that's to help you understand. There's this place, you know, to be a good parent. To do justice, to bring up the shiny, fluffy ball here. Is to do nothing. But look after them. It's important. I'm not doing nothing. Because they're only blimmin' dogs. And she settled herself down. And she's forgotten that I was impatient with her. She's the only one that's got up with me. And I mean, how beautiful is that? Right, here we go, we're back again. I don't know why I've never seen Jesus. Why I, I saw Jesus in that dream. But I've never been able to tell you. But I'm going to be able to tell you something now that I didn't before. And it's such an important picture. There's no way I forgot it. The Lord's just kept it for an hour, like, now, this is the hour. This is the hour. Micro. It's not like a micro vision. It's so fine detailed. Look, I've got a lens. That's why I always describe it as that horrible movie, Blue Velvet, where there's a boy walking in the meadow, a young man, green grass, and yeah, the difference in this one, in that movie, Blue Velvet, was it was green grass. And the one that I was in, which wasn't a movie, it was a vision, it was yellow. But it wasn't grass, it was wheat. It was a harvest that was ready. And I was right at the roots. It's like the camera went through the grass or through the harvest. But when I saw it, I was just at the end of what the camera was doing. Great camera work in that movie. Disgusting, disgusting vision, but important to share because it was an ear. And now, in this vision, it wasn't an ear severed from a man's head. It was my ear, which I didn't see, but the second part of the vision was that it was my ear. My ear. Now, I've got one ear, and I've shared that Des just came ir and very irritatably, he said, are you deaf as well? And I have. That's what I hadn't shared. <laughs> Don't get triggered, right? I've known the man three or more years. He's never, like, he's never, he's believed I'm a liar. You know, when you, to, it's, it's quite unbearable for me to really, it's really difficult for me <laughs> to think that in someone's stupid, dumb, numbskull brain, they think I'm lying. And it's happened so many times, it's not funny in my life. Wow. 
It is, and I'm not going to go for a list. But it's what he thinks, that I'm lying. My testimony is that when I got saved, this is what I said to him. The guy's not really a Christian. He's got his sisters and nun is basically his claim to fame. And he says he's a Catholic. Anyway, I'm talking to this non-Christian, like he is one for some reason. And I'm like he's supposed to understand, which is really unfair. Because all he feels is guilt and shame when I say it. Because he's always pointing out that he's out of wedlock and here I am telling him this. I said, look, my testimony is this. That I was like any normal girl before I was saved. I had a lot of partners and I think that's quite normal now. I had no shame about that. And then, anyway, I I said, and since I've been married, since I've been a Christian, since I found Jesus, and I know the date, I said to him, it was the end of January 1994. I was 26 or so. Now I've got three dogs here. And they're always with, th no. I was going to say there was the three adults, but tribute came. Normally it's yellow. Glory and fire. Tribute doesn't normally come, but she didn't. I had to go and get her. Is that not right, Tribute? Look, she came. So weird. Um, my testimony is. That before I was, before I found Jesus, before I was saved, like any other normal girl, I had, you know, many partners. And then, since then, I have slept with two men. I have been married to them both. And then I even added this, this bit, and I didn't need to. I just said it matter factly. I said the last man I slept with was my husband. I came up the mountain. I spent a few months in the glory hut and then I went back to get my motorbike. You remember. He's nodding. He remembers. I went to get the motorbike. He used to turn up at Paul's house and he's a policeman and he listens to every word I say and he's always evaluating everything. Like he has a notepad out. Yet he still didn't listen enough to know that I had a deaf ear because I went through all my ailments about three weeks ago with him. So what an ignorant prick that is. That's why it's on the gate. 52. And the last man I'm nice and nice though. And the last man I slept with was with my husband. And I went over to get my motorbike. I hitched. Now we know why I was talking about hitching. I, I have not hitched since before I was a Christian. <laughs> Here I am a Christian, potting my thumb out. I hitched over to the West Coast. I got the first car that went past picked me up. It was the lawyer in the area, the local lawyer. And believe it or not, when I returned three days later, I went to the pub where the bandwagons go. And... I had the meal with all the bandwagons, which I used to do once a week to get to know who they were. And um, there he was. And it was him and his wife. Well, the lawyer took me over. I didn't tell him this. All I told him is that I, last time I slept with my husband was when I went over to get the motorbike. I went to explain a few things. We ended up in bed. And it was when I returned, maybe a week later, that he messaged me on the telephone. He said he'd made a mistake, that he didn't love me, and he wanted a divorce. I have slept with two men, and that's my testimony, Des. 
I want to add, but I haven't added it. Why would I sleep with an alcoholic pervert flasher? Because the Lord showed me he was a flasher. Narcissistic, which I don't use that word, but so you understand what he is. Man. Who lies? Why would I give up everything? For that. I mean, it's ridiculous. So this is what I mean by don't be triggered. That's why I want you to understand that yesterday was a very difficult, it's a, it was a very difficult day for me because that's how many layers are under this man, Dez, is what he's done. And to show up and say, are you just, you know, to, sh to not apologize after he said, oh, well, that's what Paul told me. And then just say, and then just sort of go quite clearly, just left. And since then, I've found them quite creepy. I really have. I've found him, found him quite creepy. And just, you can tell, just by the one line. He said, are you deaf too? So. My ear is on the ground and it's detailed picture and I just gave you one of the harvest. Nothing else but just the harvest. Oh God, help me to get there. I'm not rambling, I'm not. I know the Lord does this. Everything about everything is important. Every detail I share is meaningful. Please listen. I listen to you. I know it seems like you're always listening to me, but I listen to you. Somehow the Lord is showing me that I listen to you. Every word you say is how he li he's listening to you. He is listening. And he talks a lot. Jesus talks a lot. Oh, he is so beautiful. That's what that song is. He is beautiful. And I am. I can see the harvest, and that's beautiful. It's beautiful to me. It's so beautiful. Oh. Why is it yellow here? Why have I got tribute here instead of yellow? It's probably always yellow. Then the ground moves. I know it moves because you ever looked at clots, you know, in the dirt, and they're all just sort of like balls like clouds, you know, in their heart. I did that when I was a child. Well, there's those on the ground, and and that's what that's the arse end of what worms do, right? They leave that stuff behind. They put that stuff through their body, and it comes out the other end. I think that stuff starts jumping up and down. It's um, a clump and another clump. I can feel it. It's their vibration. And I can, but I can hear it, but I can feel it more than I can hear it because I can see it moving. It's every sensation. It's all my senses except 
Yes, it's all of them. And it comes right, it comes to a place where the harvest that coming out of the soil that I'm looking at bends. And I can only see so far ahead of me. And you'd be lucky if I can see, you know, to my feet ahead of me. And it bends and, and breaks when this thing goes past. And there's a possibility that it's, well, I, I think I know it's a horse now. There's a possibility that one leg is on one side and the other leg is on the other side of my body. It's that close. Like it could have gone over me and I turn my head and look up and it's so fast, this horse. It's moving so fast and furious. Oh, Lord. And I can't see. I can see him, but I've never been able to describe him. So that's what I want to say. I woke up. With the words of that song, you're beautiful, right? By the time I got to the lines, Jesus, you're beautiful. I'm not going to even explain the whole dream. Yeah, I do have to explain the whole dream. Well, at least this bit. Because I, I saw him and he said, that's what he said, he said, what will it take for you to follow me? And I knew straight away he meant the harvest because we were in the harvest. He was in the harvest. I was in the harvest. He was on a white horse, and he said, what will it take for you to follow me? And at this stage, I was, I was sort of too stunned to be standing upright and facing him, but I was, I've, I've shared the image before. It's like a woman, it's a famous painting where there's a woman crouched in a dress, and she's turned, and she's looking at a house. But instead of looking at a house and a harvest field, I'm looking at Jesus on a white horse. He's on a white horse, right? Now there's all this discussion about what Jesus has got in his hand, isn't there? What white horse? What's he got in his hand? Well, I, I've never, I've been just great, really. I think the Lord will be happy. If, you know, I've tried to think. I've tried to think it was like a sickle, which is disgusting. A sickle always reminds me of Lucifer and, oh, the, you know, the ode to sickle, right? You know, to take the harvest down. You know, all the pitchfork, the farmer. Now, we, I know from that's not, that's not the Lord either. I've always known it's not an arrow in his hand. But I've never known what's in his hand. But I am thinking just that. That's what the Lord is. When he says those words. What will it take? And this is like what I've learned. took 25 years to learn that <laughs> we are so cocky but at the time that's what I thought what will it take for you to follow me was it obviously into the harvest was the end of the question and that's what I thought I've given you everything I've done it I thought I had and I had given a lot but I hadn't given everything. And now often when I recall that, you know, over the last three years, I'm honestly not lying when I say I've done it now, but I'm still in a place where I'm 
I am slightly speaking like it's finished. You know how by faith he sees us complete? It's all like that. Because it isn't. I'm not finished. But I, I do know, I can confidence say I've given everything. So I know that I'll faithfully give everything at the end. Like every last thing. Like even right now I feel released. I feel like I've really given Des. That's one thing that I've just done. You just saw it live. That's my testimony. I've given, I've, I've, I've given that to God. I've worked that through with the Lord. It was the, the healing tears. You know, I had to remember. I had to remember why it was so painful. These little details, you know, just that I'd had a conversation and told him I had mineralist disease and I couldn't hear. And, and then he says, are you deaf as well? You know, some detective that is. He's a cop. Ugh. I'm banging my head, right? I'm banging my head. Because I'm a normal person who's frustrated with this world. Do you not feel it? And the people in it. And I just had this talk with the Lord. I said, how... Do you put up with us all? How do you manage it? How on earth do you do it? <laughs> oh, and I'm including myself in that. Oh. And that's falling in love with Jesus. So anyway, the reason why I mentioned the vision and what he said and when I didn't know that that song, he's beautiful, that the words would touch me. Because this is all happening backwards. So I, all I'm saying is that right now, I'm telling you backwards. I woke up to that song. I knew the Holy Spirit was there. I laid on my back. Because I had something in my hand. There's my hand, right? I know you can't see it. But I can feel it. And I knew what it was in my hand. Wow, it's big. It's his sword. It's his sword. I can't really get my hand around it. That's why it's not closed. I don't even know how come it's managing to be balanced in my hand. He's not giving it to me. I'm just holding it, so I can tell you what he was what he was holding. When I saw him in the harbour, he was holding a sword. That's what he was holding. He was on a white horse in the harvest holding a sword. Can you find that in the Bible? Because I don't care. That's the honest truth. And it's not a gentle scene. It's not a gentle scene at all. <laughs> There's nothing gentle about it. It's actually quite violent. It nearly killed me. <laughs> and I'm I'm just I'm not gonna use the word lucky, but really I'm just lucky to still be here that he said that to me and I had such an attitude. Because he said it with the sword. I knew he was rebuking me at the time when he said, what will it take for you to follow me? Yeah. I knew he was rebuking me. I was getting a growl for everything I was going to do before I did it. 
before I damn well did it. <laughs> oh, that's what I mean. He's a God of the past, present, and future. So that's a, that's the message. Oh, I've got to do this as well. Oh, Lord, let this work out. You know, this is a big step of faith. Okay, so now when I went to my phone, it was that red picture. It wasn't this, but this the song, Jesus, You're Beautiful, must come from this. Table Full of Strangers. Boy, that is the album of the hour. And I've been talking about this the hour. This is the album of the hour, I tell you. Okay, it's still playing. So I screenshot. Right, here we go, see? Today. Now this is my humanness. I've mentioned my frustration with this. I'm videoing with my pink phone. I've got to be quick here. I've said they'd moved two buttons here. This one here is a more expensive phone, but the screen's gone pink. Uh, probably a better phone. One button here, it's an S9, one over here. I can do screenshots. My, my son taught me to do screenshots like that. With two, Clex does screenshots with two fingers, one on each side. I just saw him do one. This telephone is about a third the price. Is the one I've got. And even the one I've got six months ago still costs three times as much as this one. This is a really good phone. But I think they had to reduce the price because they put the buttons on two on the same on the same side. They stuffed up. So I'm frustrated trying to get the screenshot. Trying to get the time because the Lord told me to get the time. Already I've got the sword. I get up. I'm calm. I take the screenshot eventually after the phone shut down. Now, here's the screenshot. 24th of June. The number is 149. Now, Lord, do I go with 149 or do I take one off? And the Lord says take one off. We might have to test this out, okay? And the Lord make see being looking to fall for Jesus is one thing, but letting him down is another. I don't want to let him down. That's what this is about. When I do this, I don't give a shit what you think. I don't want to let him down. I heard him do the screenshot. Look up the number, right? We're just going to do it in Google. No, we're not. We're going to do it in DuckDuckGo because I don't want them to know. They probably know anyway. Let's, oh, what? Let's just get rid of everything. And strong. One forty-eight because I took a, a second off. Go. Oh, no, you are so beautiful. She's beautiful. It's the, uh, uh, it's the top one, I know it. Abuse of speech. I don't know why the usage is foul language. Let's see what the occurrence is. They often just jump to assumptions in this. This is a form of foul speaking, low and obscene speech, shameful speaking. Do you know what this is about?
Podcast Wood Logos.